Hello everyone. In today's episode, we're tackling a topic that affects us all in one way or another. Cancer. What is cancer actually and what theories are there about its origins? In particular, we will discuss the theory of Dr. Thomas Seyfried and explain the associated therapeutic approaches. Cancer is a disease caused by uncontrolled growth and proliferation of cells. There are various theories about how cancer develops. A common theory is that cancer arises from genetic changes that affect the growth and division of cells. These changes can be caused by various factors, including UV rays, tobacco smoke, chemicals, chronic infections, alcohol consumption, and unhealthy lifestyles. In this context, oncogenes play a crucial role. Oncogenes are parts of a cell's genetic material that, if excessively activated, promote the transition from the cell's normal growth behavior to uncontrolled tumor growth. Oncogenes are more specifically the mutated forms of proto-oncogenes that normally play an important role in regulating cell growth and division. However, when these genes mutate, they can cause the cell to grow and divide uncontrollably, leading to the development of cancer. An alternative theory, the metabolic theory of Dr. Thomas Seyfried, views cancer as a metabolic disease. According to this theory, the cell's energy production is defective, which leads to the development of cancer. This theory is based on the work of German scientist Otto Warburg in the 1920s. Dr. Seyfried goes a step further and argues that no cancer cell can survive in the absence of the sugar glucose and the base glutamine, especially when ketones are used to support the viability of normal cells. But why are glucose and glutamine so crucial for cancer cells? Cancer cells are known to use glucose as their main source of energy. However, compared to normal cells, cancer cells have an increased number of sugar receptors, particularly glucose transporter 1, GLUT1. This increased number of GLUT1 allows cancer cells to absorb more glucose, which they use as fuel for their rapid growth and reproduction. According to Seyfried, a malfunction of the mitochondria, the power plants of the cell, is the central element of almost all types of cancer. He points out that the mitochondria in most cancers are defective in various ways, and that their structures and numbers are abnormal. In addition, cancer cells show an increased dependence on glutamine, a process called glutaminolysis. This dependence on glutamine is a characteristic feature of cancer cell metabolism. Glutaminolysis allows cancer cells to use glutamine for energy, which is crucial for their survival and uncontrolled growth. Glucose and glutamine are crucial factors for the survival of cancer cells, as they both provide the energy needed for the rapid growth and proliferation of cancer cells and bypass possible dysfunctional mitochondria. In connection with the metabolic theory of Dr. Seyfried, is suggested ketogenic metabolic therapy. This therapy is based on a ketogenic diet, high in fats and low in carbohydrates. The idea is that cancer cells rely on glucose to survive and grow, and a ketogenic diet deprives cancer cells of this energy source. In addition, Dr. Seyfried suggested using drugs to deplete glutamine, another important energy source for cancer cells. It is important to note that each theory has its own strengths and weaknesses and that reality often occurs somewhere in between. Additionally, it is crucial to understand that the effectiveness of therapy often depends on the specific type of cancer and the stage of the disease. Some studies indicate that mitochondria in certain cancer cells actually exhibit changes that result in altered metabolic activity. However, the assumption that mitochondria are generally defective is not generally accepted. Other researchers emphasize that the role of mitochondria in cancer cells is complex and depends on various factors, including tumor type, genetic background and microenvironment. These factors can work together to influence how the cancer cells produce energy and multiply. The conventional therapies for cancer include surgery, radiation therapy I, and chemotherapy. These therapies aim to remove the tumor or stop the cancer cells from growing. However, in recent years, new therapeutic approaches have emerged that target specific molecular properties of cancer cells. These targeted therapies, also known as molecular biology therapies, can target cancer cells and often have fewer side effects than conventional therapies. If you have cancer, you should seek advice from qualified doctors and oncologists who know your type of cancer well. Be sure to inform yourself well, as there are various treatment options such as radiation therapy or chemotherapy. You may also be able to combine ketogenic diets, fasting, or other suitable methods to find the best therapy for you. Always talk to your doctors about what makes sense for you, because you are responsible for your life and ultimately make the decision yourself. Cancer is a complex disease that can arise from various causes, 
There are different theories about how cancer occurs and different ways to treat it, we must continue research to better understand cancer and thus find even more effective therapies. Thanks for watching this episode. Stay healthy and don't forget, knowledge is the best medicine. And as always, I wish you a long, healthy and happy life. Thank you.